Last week, I introduced you to Zorin OS 18, which is the closest Linux distribution I've found for Windows. And they've done a really good job of making it a easy transition for Windows users to come over to Linux. But is it really useful if you can't use some of your Windows apps on Linux? Today, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. Stick around. Like I stated in my video last week, there is no one-for-one -one replacement for Windows. And of course, the Windows fan bros, let me know that in the comments, it is an alternative. If you are someone looking to get away from the Microsoft space, this is a good option. And Zorin OS 18 in particular has done a good job of making it an attractive option for Windows users. But if you are like me, there are still some core Microsoft applications that you still have to use on a daily basis. And there are ways to do that in Linux. And today we're gonna demonstrate that. But first, I gotta keep the lights on. So check out today's sponsor. Are you using an unregistered version of Windows 11? Then you need to check out keyspan.com. Keyspan offers a wide range of products, including Windows 11, Windows 10, and even older versions like Windows 7. Need Office software? They got you covered with keys for Office 2019 and Office 2021. And here's the best part. You can save big with exclusive coupon codes by using my code RKT50 to get 50% off all Windows series. That means you can get Windows 11 Pro for less than $20. But wait, there's more. For Microsoft Office, use my code RKT62 to get a massive 62% off. Buying is super easy. Just add your chosen product key to your cart, apply the coupon code, and pay securely via PayPal or credit card. You'll receive your genuine activation key in no time. Once you have your product key, go back to the activation page, click on change product key, enter the product key you just purchased, and click activate. Be sure to check out keysfan.com. Real quick, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously and it gets my videos out to more people. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Today, I'm gonna pick up on exactly where I left off last week and that's the installation and walkthrough of Zorin OS 18. You need to refer to that video to be up to speed with where we are today because today I'm gonna jump right in and install a Windows application that I use every day. And I've seen a bunch of other videos out there where the creator's showing you how to install Windows application and it seems like a lot of them do the same thing. They use Notepad++ as their example and then move on. To me, I think that's a bad representation because Notepad++ is a very simple program and will absolutely run without having to make any tweaks at all. And I like to show you real life problems here on this channel. So we're going to install PDF Gear, which is a free PDF editor that I use all the time. It is not available on Linux, and unlike other free PDF editors, you can actually edit text and do a lot of things that the professional tools do. So it is absolutely something that I would need to make the switch to Linux. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so from Zorin OS 18, where we left off last week is here, we have Wine. Now Wine is our compatibility layer tool. It is not an emulator, and that's actually what Wine stands for. Wine is not an emulator. Instead, it takes those Windows commands and translates them into Linux commands and allows us to run that software in Linux. And in itself, it's good for some basic operations. It essentially creates a virtual C drive that you can install applications on. But the problem with that is more complex applications that may share dependencies can actually cause problems. And that's where Bottles comes in. So Bottles allows you to have a completely separate environment for all of your Windows applications. So I'm gonna show you an example of both, starting with Wine. So if we just wanted to, let's use the very simple example of setting up Notepad++. I'm gonna go over here to my downloads because I already have that downloaded. And as far as downloading the software for Windows, that is exactly the same, no matter whether you're on Windows or Linux. Open your favorite web browser, go to the website and just download the executable. So I've got those here already. Now, if I go to my downloads folder and just do a right click, there's an option here to open with install Windows application. 
we're going to do that. You're going to get this warning every time that installing from an unknown Windows app can cause problems, blah, blah, blah. You'll always get that. So I'm just going to click run anyway. All right, now you can see the installer has popped up here. I'm just going to click OK. And all this stuff is pretty standard. Looks like we're in Windows. Going to agree to the terms. Going to click next, next, and install. And then I'm going to click finish. And then Notepad++ is going to load. Easy peasy, right? It's actually a little too easy because most Windows applications are going to be more complex than that and they're going to require more tweaking than that. So that's what we're going to do next and we're going to use Bottles. So I'm going to close this out. Now I have already made a shortcut to Bottles on my desktop, but you will also find it here under the Wine menu. So if we click Bottles, we're going to create a new bottle. Again, think of this as an isolated environment that our Windows program is going to run in and we can create as many bottles as necessary. So I'm just going to name this one PDF Gear because that is the program that I'm going to install. This next part here is crucial. If you are installing a game, you definitely want to choose gaming. Um, this is an application, so I'm going to choose application. Now, the next thing that can be a bit complicated is the runner. The runner is the specific version of Wine that you will use to set up your software. Some have different compatibility features. It's going to default to Soda, but I know that specifically for PDF gear that I need Wine, so SysWine 10.0. There's also several other ones that you can download and add to that list. So I've got my runner selected. I've got this set to application. I've got the name that I want my bottle to be. And now I'm just going to go ahead and click create. Now that it's created, I'm going to go ahead and click close. I know that if I just go ahead and run my executable file here to set up PDF gear, that it's going to fail because it has specific dependencies that aren't installed by default. So I'm going to go ahead and install those first. But before I do, I want to show you something else. There are a lot of pre-installed programs here, especially for gaming. You have Blizzard Battle.net, EA Launcher, Epic Games, and on and on and on. Autodesk Fusion, all kinds of things that we won't be looking at today, but I did want to point that out. I'm going to go back. There's a couple of dependencies that I need for PDF gear. The first one is this one here. This is all fonts, and this adds Microsoft and Adobe Essential fonts. So whether you know it or not, whenever you open up a Microsoft Office application or an Adobe application, you have a set of fonts built into Windows. And a lot of times, if you're missing a specific font, you can easily go out there and download it. But it comes from Windows. We are essentially creating a miniature Windows environment here, and I need these fonts for this PDF editor. So the first dependency I need is all fonts. So I'm going to click Download. All right, now that that one's complete, I need a couple of more for my specific program that I'm downloading. I need this one right here, .NET Core Desktop. So this is essentially the Microsoft .NET Core Desktop runtime. Now in Windows, a lot of applications require this .NET framework. If it's not already installed on your computer, it's one of those things that'll pop up during the installation process of an application and tell you that it needs to download it. You don't even think about it, you click next and move on. I have to manually add that here for PDF gear. So I'm going to download this dependency and then I need one more. So I'm going to come all the way down here to this, which is Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 to 2022. This is another dependency I need for PDF gear to run. I'm going to download this one. All right, now that my dependencies are installed, I'm going to go back. Now I'm actually ready to install PDF gear. So I'm going to click right here where it says run executable. I'm going to go to my downloads folder and then I'm going to Click on the executable here for the PDF gear. And this will launch the installation just as if I were in Windows. And we have Welcome to PDF Gear Setup Wizard. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to accept the agreement. I'm going to click Next and Next. And these checkboxes don't really matter, but I'm going to click Next and I'm going to Install. I'm going to click Finish and PDF Gear has loaded and I can create a new file, a blank PDF. I'm not going to go through all the features of PDF gear. There is a video on my channel that walks through the entire program, shows you all the features and everything that it can do. So I will leave that link in the description if you're interested. But this is a non-Linux program running on Linux. All right, and now so when I want to run those applications, if I install it directly in Wine, 
it will be listed here. You can see Notepad++, but if it's one of my more complex applications or games, then it's gonna be listed under Bottles because it has its own environment. Right now, I only have PDF gear, but you can add as many here that will work. Not all applications are gonna work. Let me be clear. I click on that, then I just click the little play button here. And just like that, it's going to open our Windows application. And there you have it, getting you one step closer to ditching Microsoft. Let's be clear, not all applications are going to work, but with a little tweaking, I'm willing to bet you can get most of what you need on a daily basis working on Linux. What are your thoughts? Drop me a comment below. Also, drop me a comment below if there is another piece of software on Windows that you can't live without, and I just might make a video about it. Don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel helps me out tremendously. It pushes my videos out to more people and allows me to continue making videos just like this on a weekly basis. Be sure to check out some of these other video suggestions. And as always, thank you for watching and until next time. Ray knows tech.